tuned with the nation's stations, ABS TV Channel 10, the GIS, and ABS Radio 90.5 FM. Proudly serving you, reaching more and more people every day. Seven, Health Ministry reaffirms there is no case of COVID-19 in Antigua and Barbuda. Dorian Marshall sentenced to 40 years in prison for the murder of Xavier Marshall. Public's help being sought in locating a missing Bendel's Village teenager. And Prime Minister Brown engages in high-level discussions at CARICOM intersessional meeting. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico. Local Agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS, Antigua's News Authority, live coverage of Parliament's uh, Upper House, the Senate, continues on the Government Information Services, the GIs. So my name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Charmaine Jeremy, and a pleasant good evening to all our viewers joining us at home and online. And tonight, Dorian Marshall has been sentenced to 40 years imprisonment for the murder of 20-year-old Xavier Marshall. Jurors found Marshall guilty of murder November last year, but could not decide on a verdict for his co-accused Jason Millett or Shalom Bailey. Now Thomas was shot and killed when the occupants of a vehicle opened fire on a restaurant in Cedar Grove where she and others had gathered. The incident occurred on the night of August 18, well 2017. Now at the sentencing hearing today, Marshall's attorney, Andrew Okola, pleaded for leniency for the 39-year-old father of six. The attorney says the conditions at Her Majesty's prison fall short of the standard minimum rules for the treatment of prisoners. This, he says, will magnify his client's prison term, causing intense physical and mental suffering. Indeed. Now, of course, just to remind you, that Xavier, 20-year-old Xavier Thomas was shot and killed on August 18, 2017. Justice Stanley John says while the court is concerned about the conditions at the prison, only the executive arm of government can address the situation. Justice John, who says this offense falls short, just short of being among the worst of the worst, insists it deserves a sentence of 60 years imprisonment. However, the judge began with a sentence of 45 years, which was reduced to 40 years, considering several factors, including the defendant's age and the possibility of him becoming a change agent in the society. Millet and Bailey are scheduled to be retried during the ongoing criminal Azizis. And we'll of course have more news on the courts because this one, our 21-year-old resident of All Saints was convicted and fined $15,000 in the St. John's Magistrates Courts today. That one, Simon, pleaded uh, guilty to possession of firearm and ammunition. He was fined 10000 for the possession of firearm and $5,000 for possession of ammunition. Now, the fines were ordered to be paid forthwith or he will serve one year at Her Majesty's Prison. The weapon and ammunition were found when officers attached to the Special Services Unit, or SSU, searched him about 9.30 last Saturday evening on Pope's Head Street. They found a .380 pistol along with four matching rounds of ammunition with him. Police have so far uh, this year seized seven illegal firearms and approximately 70 rounds of ammunition. Your help is being sought in locating a teenager from the Bendels village who has been reported missing. She is 13-year-old Ideen Mason, who was last seen on Saturday, 15th February. This, she, is a, she is fair in complexion, about five, six inch, 5 feet 6 inches in height, and slimly built. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Youth Intervention Unit at 562-8417 or the Criminal Investigations Department at 462-3913 or 3914 without delay. I said about this other developing story. More news now from on matters of crime and justice. A 47-year-old Jamaican man will spend two months and three weeks in prison for importing cannabis into the country. Donovan Fagan appeared before Magistrate Nayo Emmanuel Edwards today on charges of possession of cannabis, possession with intent to transfer, and importation of cannabis. He arrived in Antigua on a Caribbean Airlines flight on February 6 and was denied entry by immigration authorities. Fagan was later taken to the Immigration Detention Center where he was found to have ingested 30 pellets containing cannabis. The drug weighed 209 grams, which Fagan had said was for his personal use. 
He had been sentenced to three months for importation, but the one week spent on remand was deducted, hence two months and three weeks. Magistrate Emmanuel Edwards reprimanded and discharged him on the other two charges. Developing stories for you, much more to come, including more details on, of course, the country and making sure that there is immense vigilance against the novel coronavirus COVID-19. Still to come as well. And the APUA explains what is being done to address discolored water being received by some customers. Plus, the sounds of pan in the city, keeping the art form alive. We'll tell you how it is being done on air and online. Stay with us right here on the ABS TV News. At Magico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're covered when your house gets flooded. Getting your settlements quickly and fairly when a fire hits your home. And making sure your business can keep going even after an accident happens on site. At Magico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Why not stay in, turn off the alarm clock, and sleep some more on your perfect mattress from Quartz? For the widest range of mattresses from the world's best brands, the best value guaranteed. Shop today and let our sleep experts help you to decide on the best option to suit your needs. At Quartz, we don't just sell mattresses. We're offering you the best night's sleep. So, sleep in a little on your new mattress from Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. EC Polymer Notes, our new money. Here's how you can detect genuine EC Polymer Notes. Feel. Polymer Notes feel smoother than the material from which paper notes are made. Also, the front of each note has raised bumps at the top left-hand corner. These bumps form shapes that are familiar to you. Look. Look for the clear window at the front and back of each note. This window allows you to see through the notes. If you hold the notes up to the light, you'll see the value of the note in an area of plain colored print. Tilt, a holographic foil is on the $100, $50, and $20. The images move and their colors change when you tilt the notes. Remember, detecting genuine EC Polymer notes is as easy as one, two, three. Feel, look, and tilt. EC Polymer notes, cleaner, safer, stronger. And as we continue the ABS Evening News, a developing story now on the CARICOM intersessional meeting because Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown, well, he signed with the Chief Executive Officer of the CARICOM Development Fund, Mr. Rodinald Sumer, uh, today signed the third financing agreement with Prime Minister Brown under the CDF's second funding cycle, bringing the total value of funds committed to uh, the member state of Antigua and Barbuda to U.S. $1.39 million within the current cycle. The grant of 80,000 U.S. dollars is for an institutional review and capacity building support to the Antigua and Barbuda Development Bank, the ABDB, which is expected to set the stage for the consideration by the CDF of concessionary loan assistance to that institution for on lending to the small and medium enterprise sector. Antigua's Country Assistance Program, or CAP, with the CDF now consists of a grant of 1.0 million US dollars to co-finance co the construction of an 800 kilowatt solar diesel battery storage hybrid power plant on Barbuda, as well as a grant of 310,000 US dollars to facilitate growth of bilateral trade with Suriname under a technical cooperation agreement between the two countries, as well as a grant for technical assistance support to the ABDB, which is the Antigua Barbuda Development Bank, of, as I said, valued at 80. 
thousand US dollars. Now, the CDF has provided concessionary financing to small and medium-sized businesses, uh, mainly through national development banks in member countries, including Belize, Grenada, Dominica, and St. Lucia. We'll keep across this major developing story. But Prime Minister Brown signing today with the Chief Executive Officer of the CARICOM Development Fund, the CDF, for the third financing cycle or oh, sorry, under the CDF's second funding cycle, bringing the total value of funds committed to the member state of Antigua and Barbuda under the CDF to 1.39 million US dollars. Of course, Prime Minister Brown is there in Barbados attending the intercessionary meeting, the 31st intercessional meeting of CARICOM heads of government in Barbados. We'll have more, much more on this developing story a bit later on as well. All right, let's tell you about this other developing story. Now, Antigua Public Utilities Authority, the APOA, says residents can expect to see clearer water in their pipes as the company works to rectify the, quote, brown water problem plaguing several communities. ABS's Leon Norville has an update. APOA is working towards addressing the issue of discolored water coming through your tap by the end of 2020. We are working furiously in doing our groundwork carefully planning and allocating resources specifically to first off the transmission main between crabs and the power and booster station that's an old metal pipe that needs to be trans well needs to be replaced the authority is hoping to secure a 13 million ec dollar loan to overhaul the transmission main from crabs the power and booster station and old metal pipes in the island's water distribution network APUA's Public Relations Coordinator Shreefa George says this will eliminate this colored water coming through consumers' tap. The brown or reddish water that persons are experiencing is residue from, well, iron residue in the water, and it originates from two aspects of the network. That's a residue. I can assure you, though, that the quality of water leaving the plant is not that, but once it travels through the network, what comes at the end, even once it goes through the PVC pipes, because the residue is now building up in those pipes, is this brownish, reddish water. The old metal pipes in the distribution network contributes to discoloration of water in the areas of Martins Village, Freeman's Village, Seaview Farm, Lightfoot Point, and some sections of Villa. In the meantime, George says discolored water should not be used for domestic purposes. We wouldn't advise persons to use this water to consume it or to um, use it for domestic purposes. Just looking at it alone is not ideal for those sorts of uses, usages. Leon Norville reporting, ABS News. As the debate on the appropriations bill continued in Parliament's upper house today, Senator Sh Shanella Gavaya says the government has been churning out opportunities for Antiguans and Barbudans. 160 homes already completed in painters. Denfield, 72, and even an individuals who want to build their own home, Madam President. The Ministry of Housing has completed 89 homes. If you have your own land, you could go to National Housing and they're willing to build your home for you at a discounted cost. She says assistance has also been provided for entrepreneurs. The Entrepreneurial Development Program, Madam President, which falls under the Prime Minister. And you can actually go down to the Sajiko building, that is where they're located, that is their headquarters. And you can get loans up to $75,000 with minimal collateral, Madam President, and the interest payment is nothing. To date, they have disbursed around $1 million. Yes. She says major strides have also been made in education with the establishment of the University of the West Indies Five Islands Campus and the Second Chance Program. Meanwhile, an update was also provided in the Senate on the work being carried out on the Fries Hill Road. Government Senator Eustace Lake raised the issue as he contributed to the debate on the Appropriations Bill 2020. As you can see, the pace of that has picked up tremendously is getting to the point of being finished. There might have been some slight hiccups coming down at Fry's Hill, the straight road coming down Fry's Hill, that had to do with nothing else but drainage, switch, leakage, or ensuring that what is happening there is on some level of control. Senator Lake says there has been a multi-sectoral response and stakeholders have also been engaged. He says the work is progressing well. It has been completed in a short period. Yes, there's taking a while, but perfection, as my colleague Senator 
Govaya indicated earlier, takes time. The thoroughfare, along with the Sir George Walter Highway, are being overhauled as part of a £13.9 million grant from the UK government. The contractor is Bahamas Hot Mix, or BHM. Well, data collection here in this country will receive a major boost thanks to a new initiative being launched by the Department of the Environment. ABS's Rakiba Aparicio explains how it works. The Department of the Environment will spend the next three years collecting data for the newly launched CBIT project, dubbed the Climate Actions to an Environment Registry in Antigua and Barbuda project. The information will assist us in reporting to the different multilateral environmental agencies we're a part of, as well as for if someone has a project to do, they can find this information available. Businesses can use this data to plan. Project coordinator Leah Tewitt says this will make future project implementations easier as the data will now be in hand and won't need to be sourced. The main goal under this project is to operationalize our environment, man, sorry, environment registry as mandated in Part 10 of the EPMA 2019, that's the Environmental Protection and Management Act. The department is also receiving funding from the Global Environment Facility, or GEF, to the tune of one million U.S. dollars. The end goal is for this environment registry to be Antigua and Barbuda's official source on climate-related data. Rakib Aparisi reporting for ABS News. All right, well, the coronavirus continues to claim lives around the world. The Ministry of Health here in Antigua and Barbuda continues to keep the public abreast on the developments, citing, again, that there is no confirmed case in Antigua and Barbuda of the disease. Now, ABS's Rakib Aparisi has the very latest from a press conference held today about the potentially deadly disease. We do not have any suspected or confirmed cases of co uh, coronavirus. Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, the Honorable Marlon Joseph, says being proactive will be crucial in dealing with the potential threat of the coronavirus. The government, he says, has implemented a number of measures to protect our citizens. Passengers coming to Antigua are pre-screened before they board an aircraft. Uh, whether they're coming out of the UK, US, or anywhere out of Europe. Should a passenger be suspected of symptoms of the coronavirus, Minister Joseph says they will be barred from entry. Travel restrictions are also in place for individuals coming from China. Um, over the last few, uh, few weeks, if I can recall, maybe approximately 12, and um, six of them have been repatriated. And we gave them the option of going back, or if they were to stay, they'll go to the 14-day quarantine. A number of locations have also been earmarked as quarantine and screening locations. There is an area at the VCB International Airport that's designated for Port Health, so the person will be escorted to that area. Also identified are parts of Mount St. John's Medical Center and Halberton Hospital. Minister Joseph estimates Halberton Hospital will be ready in two weeks. Based on my limited knowledge of, um, of construction, at the end of the day, we might be spending about half a million dollars in um, fixing up the uh, Margaretson Ward. In order to verify if someone is infected, Minister Joseph says samples will be sent to the Caribbean Public Health Agency, or CARFA. They're able to turn around this test in four hours. Sending samples to CARFA, he says, will also be done as soon as possible. If we should have a um, need for a sample to go to Trinidad right now, We'll just contact the regional security services. They'll come pick it up and take it to Trinidad. Rakib Aparisi reporting for ABS News. Meanwhile, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Rhonda Seely Thomas says there's no specific treatment for the coronavirus. However, she says experimental medication is being used overseas. Dr. Thomas outlines options available in Antigua and Barbuda. We do have the um, medicine and equipment available for supportive management and um, th those would be used in the absence of any definitive proven um, antiviral treatment. Health authorities are also stepping up their game when it comes to seaport surveillance. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Rhonda Seely Thomas shares the process for cargo ships seeking permission to dock. We've stepped up our surveillance in that and making sure that their certificates are up to date and if they're not up to date they won't allow, be allowed to, to, to dock. But there was always a process in place for um, monitoring rats and other rodents on ships, and we've strengthened that. She says this will be useful for monitoring the spread of communicable diseases into this country. 
And of course, let's tell you about this other developing story as well. That Antiguan Barbados aviation sector is soaring to new heights with the opening of the long-awaited cabin for air traffic controllers at the VC Bird International Airport. Now, top officials and aviation experts past and present were in attendance at the historic occasion at the old terminal of the airport. Also there was ABS's Andy Lybird. <laughs> And with the symbolic ribbon cutting, the doors are open to the brand new facility. And then a toast to the momentous occasion. The new cabin is perched high above ground and not only gives the air traffic controllers a bird's eye view of the runway, but places new technologies at their fingertips. It once again distinguishes Antigua and Barbuda from other territories in the region, as the facility represents a first for the OECS. CEO of the Airport Authority, Yoletta Francis, was a leading figure in the project team from inception. The final phase culminated with the site acceptance test on February 14, 2020. An unforgettable day, Valentine's Day. With the completion of this final phase, operations from the new facility begins, believe it or not, tomorrow, February 19th. This is the reason we celebrate here today. Among the other proud members of the audience at the opening ceremony were Civil Aviation Minister Sir Robin Yearwood and the Chief of Air Traffic Services, Sheneth Phillips, who leads the team of direct beneficiaries of the project. We expect not to just stay there, but maybe we have to catch our breath a little bit. But we are going to investigate the possibility of bringing radar up to that tower. For recognizing that an investment in aviation is an investment in the economy of Antigua and Barbuda, as tourism is our lifeblood. The air traffic controllers have been operating from a temporary facility, but that will be no more as they move to elevated levels, taking the airline industry in Antigua and Barbuda with them. Andy Lybird reporting for ABS News. And Pan in the City is back. It's a way of keeping culture and steel pan music alive in Antigua. ABS's Kim Emanuel Baird brings us the excitement from our capital. <laughs> Steel pan music serenaded the capital city, from the St. John's Cathedral churchyard to the museum, to the Savisi Bird statue, and the Cultural Development Division, where local food, drinks, and crafts were on sale. This program, put on by the events team at the Cultural Development Division, is to ensure the renaissance of pan music is exposed to both visitors and locals alike. Entering its third year, Deputy Director of Culture, Ken Cordes, says he's pleased with the reaction from the public and tourists, and he says the merger with Tourism Authority makes a perfect synergy. And this morning we had a, quite a bit of um, tourists up at the um, St. John's Cathedral, so I think it, the impact is really happening. Um, and again, just for us to continue to see what we can do to help to grow that. Um, tourism is one of our biggest business. Um, to marry it with culture, I mean, it's perfect, you know, so it's something that we'll continue to work towards. The original steel orchestra was featured at the St. John's Cathedral Tuesday morning. Band manager Elvis Weatherell says, as the youngest steel orchestra on island, they're in need of a sponsor, and this type of initiative can help them get heard. Because most of the time, the tourists tend to get um, most of the pans in the hotel, right? So they, they, they think it's a good way to bring it to the public. Kim Emanuel Baird, ABS News. Oh, fantastic. Exciting stuff in the city today. Indeed. Sounds of pan. Jermaine. So Terry has joined us. <laughs> Hi, Terry. Yeah, certainly. And I'm going to tell you guys about some sports. Uh, none bigger than a humble reaction of by Sportswoman of the Year, Priscilla Frederick Loomis. Uh, her story and a whole lot more to come on the ABS Evening Sport when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs> 